What's up, everybody? It's so good to see you today. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. And I'm so glad you're tuning in today. I believe God has a message for you, a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. And I especially believe that today because I had a message planned for you. And then this morning, I was minding my own business and God said in his own way to me, you need to talk about this other thing. And so this message today is for you. I hope whoever this is for is watching because you totally messed up my plan. Okay, so I hope this is for you, but I know that whoever you are, this, this is gonna bless you because this message is all about rest. This message is called, You Need Rest. Before we jump in to the word today, I wanna just remind you that a like and comment and a share goes a long way in getting the message out. And if you're blessed by this, midweek mentoring uh, we want to continue doing it and so continue to to put it out there and uh, help us move the message along by doing that like comment and share and there's some links in the description as well for you to stay connected and keep things going and so i so it's, it's just today you know i i just didn't come up with this it was kind of delivered to me but you need rest because Chances are you're feeling stressed out, burned out, and even during a semi-lockdown, quiet time, stay at home, don't do as much work, uh, don't go to church, don't go to these other places, I'm, I'm still betting, I'm still betting that many of you are feeling stressed, anxious, and I think it's because, I believe it's because, we're, we're not resting. Look, we may not be working as much and our jobs as much, or maybe you are, but that doesn't mean you're resting. It doesn't mean you're resting. I, I believe that most of the world deals with this on a regular basis. So really this is timely all the time because it's something that the world has dealt with ever since the world was the world, is that we don't know how to rest. We don't know how to take a break long enough to get the replenishment that we need and what we think is rest really isn't what we think is taking a break just not showing up to the office is rest no no not not really we, we need as a society as a world as a culture we need to learn about this rest you know i am like looking at these scriptures here and i'm thinking man I, we don't even know we don't even know about this stuff and i i know that to be true because of myself i've been through this i I have been absolutely overworked, underpaid, yeah, as they say, um, completely stressed out to the max, feel like you just can't catch up, feel like you can't catch a break, and you're frazzled, you don't know why, you're trying to work your way, it's like trying to dig yourself out of a hole. You can't do it. You have to put down the shovel, and that's what rest is like. You have to put down the shovel and reach up your hand to say, God, I, I need you. I need you to meet me in this time. I need you uh, to meet me and, and help me because I can't work my way out of this. I can't, I can't works my way out of this. And so what is, what is rest? What is a Sabbath? It's called a Sabbath. It's, it's, a Sabbath is given to us one day per seven. And in case you don't know about this term, Sabbath, in case you don't know about it, um, in Genesis 2.2, Genesis 2.2, we're introduced to this concept. Um, God just gets done creating everything in six days. And on the sixth day, God creates mankind, Adam and Eve. He creates them. He makes them in, in His image. He made us in His image. It's a beautiful thing. But then right after that, God took a breather. It's, it's right here. On the seventh day, God had finished His work of creation. So He rested from all of His work. That's Genesis 2.2. He rested from all of his work. It struck me also, as I was um, kind of putting some of my notes together for this that I've compiled over the years, I have, I have a lot of notes on, on Sabbath rest because I dealt with it myself, the not doing it. But it struck me that mankind's first day was a day off. <laughs> I don't know if you ever noticed that before, but, but God created the the heavens and the earth and the water and the fish and the plant life and the animals and then he creates mankind and then you know what first day 
we're just gonna, you're just gonna sit right there <laughs> and you're gonna have a little break. Now, mankind's first day was a day of rest. I think that's interesting and I don't know, maybe you could read more about that. I mean, that's a little topic for your study. But it goes on in, in Exodus 20, there's more on this. Uh, so the, the people of, of Israel, God's people are, are leaving Egypt and he says this in Exodus 20, verses 8 through 11, it says, Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. That seventh day, um, the, the day of rest, one day per week, keeping it holy. Verse 9, You have six days each week to do your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household <laughs> may do any work. It's like, all right, God, I get it. All right, nobody's going to do any work. This includes you, your sons, your daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, any foreigners living among you. Okay, God, I get it. I get it. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, and the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. And so, uh, again, in this book of Exodus, it's really funny, actually, he he sets, the, he sets the people apart, the people of Israel, and he's, he frees them from Egypt, you know, the 10 plagues. You know, everybody has heard that story before. Everyone's basically heard about that. Um, but God intends to uh, monitor <laughs> their keeping the Sabbath, and he does it like this in Exodus 16, 4 through 5. I'm going to try and put all the scripture, uh, the footnotes in the description of this so that you can go back and read them if you want to. But in Exodus 16, 4 through 5, he says this, the Lord said to Moses, he was like the captain, okay? Moses was in charge and the Lord is speaking to Moses and says, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. But he says this, I will test them to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food and when they prepare it, there will be twice as much as normal. On the sixth day, He's going to provide twice as much as normal. Why? Because on the seventh day, they weren't supposed to go out and get any food. They weren't supposed to go out and do any work. That, that's why he's going to provide enough for two days on that sixth day. But he's like, <laughs> God's, God's funny. I think he's funny. He's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if they listen. Because it goes on to say in that same chapter that if they went out and, and got food on the seventh day, which some people did, you know, they got to they gotta get theirs, you know, they got to get their got to get their work on, that their stuff would, would come back moldy. Their stuff would come back moldy. And in fact, it was even worse than that. If you went out and gathered food on the seventh day, God was like, going to let them have it. Okay. <laughs> we see that God really intends for us to have that seventh day. To have that seventh Take that day off. Look, I'm going to provide for you. I'm, I'm going to provide for you. You need to learn to rest and to trust me enough to rest. That's a big deal. I think, at least in American culture, um, for, so for me and many of you watching, most all of you watching probably, that we, we don't trust God enough to take that day off. We don't trust Him because we're, we're and we don't say we don't trust God. We, we're just our feet are voting because we show up and we're saying, I got to take care of myself. No, 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 no. But God didn't. He didn't set things up that way. He set things up so that we would trust in Him for our provision. Not, the, not that we would need to take care of ourselves for that. No, God always intended. He, he's going to rain down manna from heaven. Like all of your needs are going to be met. Matthew 6.33 as, you know, trust in the Lord. You know, we, we want to trust in Him and look at the, the birds and the lilies and they're all clothed. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is going to be added to you. He's, you're going to be taken care of. You're going to be taken care of. Look how Jesus says it because this is not just an Old Testament thing. This is an every Testament thing. This is a now Testament idea in Mark 2, 27. Mark 2, 27. Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. Look, why did he have to say that? Because the Pharisees of the day, the religious leaders, the, the pious, the, the disciplined, the ones that made a show of their discipline were saying, and it was in their culture to meet the requirements of the Sabbath as if we human beings were made 
just to meet the requirements of, of all the laws. And Jesus comes in and says, no, I made the Sabbath for you. Not you so that you could do the, like if you just think about it at all, you'll see, oh, okay, that makes sense. The Sabbath was made for us, that we were created and then given a Sabbath right after that. We were made first, then the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for you and me. It's a beautiful thing. Not, it's not supposed to be a spiritual hoop to jump through. You know, the Sabbath, uh, the, the religious side of it. You know, that's Pharisee talk. We don't need to do that. Does it take trust to do this? Absolutely it does. It takes trust to take a day off. It takes trust to, to honor God in, in the Sabbath and say, okay, I'm going to trust you, God, that if I don't go in tomorrow, that you're going to meet my needs. You know, it's a planned day off. You know, you don't just call in one day and all your employees are like, where is he? <laughs> you're like, oh, Sabbath. No, it's, it's, you're supposed to be working those six days knowing that this day I'm not going to answer emails. You know, not like it's some surprise. Oh, I've decided to take a Sabbath randomly. No, it's not, it's not supposed to be like that. But we're, we're, man, this was made for us. Made for us. What, is this, what does this mean? What am I trying to say? What's the main point? I want to sum it up like this. God works when you rest. I'm going to say it again. God works when you rest. God works when you rest. Think, think about in Exodus, the Israelites, that when they rested that day, he made sure that what they had would last. He made sure what they had would last. It's like giving, you know, in Malachi 3.10, he says, he says that if you honor God with your finances, that he is going to make your provisions last way more and your barns are going to overflow that you won't have room to contain them all. Why? Because you first trusted in Him. The Sabbath is the same way. If I can trust Him first, He is going to step in and, dare I say, miraculously meet needs that you have been trying to, to meet yourself in your work, but you haven't been able to. You've only been able to stress yourself out and your family out, and you're frazzled and you're all over the place and you haven't been able to do it and God's just waiting. Like, man, whenever he finally takes a break, I can get busy. God works when you rest. How can I explain it to you? Um, my, my kids are small. They're four and five years old and well, almost four and, and five and they are rambunctious. They, they're messy. They're all over the place. Their toys are scattered everywhere. It's been on my mind. It's been a lot of illustrations lately about their toys. I'm, I'm not bitter. It's going to be all right. I'm going to be okay. I'm going to get over it. But I was thinking about this concept this morning like this. Like when they're awake and running around and it's like time to get ready for bed or, or whatever, Tiffany and I have to harp on them to do their work, to pick up after themselves, to go get your toothbrush. Um, go, go take your allergy medicine, go, go eat your gummies, go pick up all your toys, go put your blocks away. And like, we're following them around and it's like stressful for everybody. They're running around back and forth and they're, they're, they're going and going and going. But watch this. When they finally, finally get in bed or for a nap or something, they, they're, they're actually taking a nap right this second. They're in there taking a nap and <laughs> they work as hard as they can to try and clean up, right? But when they finally go to bed, Tiffany and I can clean up faster and more efficiently. Because why? Because they're asleep. Because they're resting. <laughs> because they're out of our way. Listen, some of you need to get out of God's way today. And he's, he's begging you. And it's like a win-win for you. Take a break. Take a day off for crying out loud. God's just waiting there. Like Tiffany and I on the couch, you know, when you finally go to bed, I can clean up this place. I can provide for you. I can, I can put your toys away the way they're supposed to be put away. And when you come out of your rest, you're going to find it looking better and in more order than when you went into rest. But how does that work? It doesn't add up in our minds, right? Because, oh, I have to do it. I have to get everything done. Listen, um, 
The Bible says a lot about that kind of thinking. And the Bible doesn't have a lot of good things to say about it. Works based anything. Look, because God wants to meet our needs. He made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we may know the righteousness of God. There's, a, there's an exchange that is always intended to happen. This is like a type and shadow almost of, of salvation of God. Is, is rest can be, can be mirrored that way. It's beautiful. So what am I telling you to do? What's the application here? Take, take a day off. Go rest. Go relax. Go chill. You know, go and, and enjoy yourself. And I'm not saying just don't show up to the office. I'm saying the, the, the day that you don't show up to the office, actually rest. Don't check your email that day. You know, p- turn your phone off. <gasps> Turn your phone off. Turn the laptop off. Give the right people the notice they need and unplug. Rest. Eat. <laughs> Some of you are like, me, I don't need to stop eating so much, but you understand what I mean. Make that day an uh, intentional day of rest and watch God begin to show up in your life. I believe that this message was specifically tailored for somebody watching today and maybe many of you that you need to rest today you need to take a day off you you never know your your breakthrough might be waiting for not your hard work just your obedience to receive a gift that god wants to give you this rest well i hope that blessed you today and i want to remind you that a like, a comment, and a share goes a really long way in getting this message across. And if you want to take a next step with us, there's links in the description to do that. You can, you can give through the church into the ministry. You can sign up for a life group, which gets people together. Um, there's ways to connect with us. There's a connection card there. There's links in the description. Your breakthrough might be waiting on the other side of a next step. Let me pray for you today and pray for some rest in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, just lift up everyone watching that they would, they would receive your rest, receive your grace, and that we would trust you enough to rest and to lean into you for that rest. Pray this, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you again very soon.